creation is the belief that all things that we see around us, that all things that are, were created by God, intended and given as pure gift, out of nothing, not by necessity, but as gift. We believe in a creator and a creation. Philosophy tells us that the world must have a cause, all changeable and unnecessary things must have an unchangeable and necessary cause, but we believe this creator is God who intends and wills this world into existence. It's interesting that science tends towards a belief in a big bang for the creation of this universe. In fact, it was a Catholic scientist priest called Monsignor George Lemaitre who gave us that theory. But the book of Genesis gives us divine and inspired wisdom about the creation of the world, and that there is an order and a meaning and a purpose to this world as it unfolds. The book of Genesis is not a scientific treatise, but it gives us key insights into God's plan for this universe. That at one point he created, as the pinnacle of all his creation, the human person, who uniquely amongst all the things that are made is both a spiritual and material being, a bridge between the, the world of the divine and the world of the physical. The human being had the soul breathed into him. And the human being is also duplex, male and female. We're looking at an image of paradise presented here by a Flemish artist, Jacob de Becker. And we see God the Father standing in his lush paradise created for Adam and Eve. We don't know much about the artist de Becker, apart from the fact that he died young, but in that time he was remarkably prolific. In this wonderful canvas, he's taken pains to emphasize the beauty of God's creation. We see animals, we see birds, lush trees, all is paradise laid out. God the Father is standing with Adam and Eve and pointing to a tree. That tree is the tree of knowledge, and God the Father is in the process of warning Adam and Eve that they can try every fruit in the garden, save the fruit from this tree. I think Debacca chooses this moment deliberately. It's a moment of drama set against the lushness of the landscape. We know what's going to happen as a viewer we, as we look into this image. Eve turns towards her husband and places her hand on his shoulder. Adam has his back to us, and with God they form a sort of triangle. We're caught up in the drama of the moment, but for now, paradise is preserved. The origins of the human being are mysterious in scripture as they are in science. But even science today suggests that we descend from one woman, that we are one family, that the human race is one, and we believe that as Christians, that we have soul and body. We're distinct from the other animals that exist, although possessing their own beauty and dignity. We are beings who are made in the image and likeness of God. The book of Genesis tells us this, and it tells us that we were to exist in a certain harmony with the created order around us and with our Creator, the gift which is called grace that unites us to our Creator. It's interesting that in many of the cultures of the ancient world and in the ancient Near East in particular, there's an account of this original harmony. But we also hear in those cultures and in detail in the book of Genesis how this was broken by the sin of the first human beings, those archetypal human beings that we call Adam and Eve. De Paolo presents us with the vision of paradise. What we see is God the Father looking down on his creation. And this is shown through a series of concentric circles with the earth at the center, surrounded by the elements and the planets, and finally the signs of the zodiac. I think De Paolo might have been influenced here by the work he'd done as a manuscript illuminator on Dante's Divine Comedy. God presides above his creation, supported by seraphim, leaning forward and pointing down. God the Father points towards his creation, but we can also see with his other hand he holds back his cloak to stop it 
falling into his creation to maintain a separation between the world that he created and himself. In contrast to the scene of perfection of creation, adjacent to it, we see the expulsion of Adam and Eve from Eden. Paradise is now close to them, and to emphasise their loss, the artist has depicted Eden as a lush paradise, trees full of fruit, beautiful flowers, but they're being ushered out by an angel. The rivers of paradise flow beneath them as they make their exit. I think the original setting of this altarpiece would have emphasised the loss of Adam and Eve because next to it would have been an image of paradise with angels and saints embracing as if to show Adam and Eve what they have lost. This fall of the human beings as described in the book of Genesis is also called original sin. And the scriptural story from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation is all about how this fall, this separation of humanity from God is overcome. How God and man are reconnected. And it ultimately happens in Jesus Christ. There is a prophecy right at the end of that first part of the book of Genesis. It's called the Proto-Evangelium because it is before the Gospel. It talks about the serpent being crushed, the head of the serpent, by this woman and by her offspring. And that offspring is seen to be Christ.